My name's Neil Davis, the founder of Digital Cloud Training. I've been working in this industry for multiple decades and I've been training people on AWS for the last several years. Now, one of the reasons I created this particular video is because many of my students are concerned about the fact that AWS recently retired the free tier and they changed it to this new credit-based system. Now, I cover that in detail in another video and we'll link that in the description of this one. So if you want to understand the new credit-based model, then please watch that video before continuing with this one. But in this video, we're going to actually look at a little bit more around cost management and go into some more depth. And if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this one. So let's get straight into it. So my first tip is to use the AWS pricing calculator. That will help you to build out an estimate of what you're going to spend for particular use cases. And the pricing pages on AWS for each individual service are going to help you to understand the services a little bit better as well. If you do any of our training courses, by the way, I'll go into a lot of depth on pricing. So for example, EC2, it's fairly complex. There's a lot of different options with EC2, things like savings plans and reserved instances. So you really need to understand that one in depth. Now, the calculator is a super useful tool. You'll find this at the URL calculator.aws. Now, what we can do here is we can create an estimate. So first thing I do, click on Create Estimate. You need to select your region. There are slight variations in the cost of services for different regions around the world. So make sure you select the one where you would most likely run your workloads. I'm going to leave it on US East North Virginia. Then I can search for the service, or I can just pick the service from this list here. So for example, I might choose EC2. Then I can click on configure, and now I can choose the operating system. If we use the Windows licensing, for example, provided the kind of bundled in, then it's going to cost a little bit more. If I use Linux, then the price is usually a bit lower. So now if I scroll down, I can choose the number of instances. Maybe I am evaluating auto scaling and load balancing. So I might want a minimum of two instances, perhaps more, perhaps three or four. So let's just start with two here. And I want to choose a specific instance type that is going to suit my requirements. Now, there's a couple of things here. Of course, if you're evaluating production workloads, then you're going to need to select an instance that's appropriate for that workload. So you want to make sure it's got the right number of vCPUs and memory so you can really test the performance. If all you're doing is, for example, learning the service like students of mine do, then you really don't need to worry about performance where perhaps just installing a simple website and load balancing across using a load balancer to different instances. So in that case, the performance can be very low. So what we want to do is try and leverage the free tier credits. So if I go to search for AWS free tier, it's going to take me to this web page here. And what I can do is I can find services like EC2 and it will tell me which instance types are available on the free plan. Okay, If you're on the uh, paid plan, even if you've got credits, you can choose any instance type. And if you choose one that's more expensive, you're just going to use up the credits faster. So for example, I might say, well, a, a T3 small sounds reasonable, maybe a micro. Let's come back to my estimate here. And I can search. And it's going to bring up a T3 small. I can see it's got two, two vCPUs, two gigabytes of memory. If instead I choose a micro, Search again. That's got two vCPUs and one gigabyte of memory. Five gigabytes of network performance or gigabits. And we can see the hourly cost here. Now, take note of the hourly cost because most likely, if you're doing an evaluation or you're just studying and learning and familiarizing yourself with AWS, you're probably not going to run these workloads for an entire month. So it's going to spit out the monthly fee, but we might just say, well, I'm going to run this for like three or four hours. Uh, so the cost is going to be really low. Okay, so let's just choose the T3 Micro here. And I might want a couple of these, so I've chosen two. I'm going to use On Demand because this is the pricing model which we're using for, for evaluation. Things like savings plans are good if you're, uh, you know, you're reserving or you're going to consume a certain amount of AWS resource over a longer period of time. So you're making a commitment and that's going to bring the cost down, so one or three years. On demand is what you want to use for this particular model. Uh, show calculations, okay, so we can see that this is going to cost 15 
dollars a month. But don't forget that this is for an entire month. We're not going to run this for an entire month. So just bear that into your consideration. I'm going to save this and then add another service. So the next one would be I need a load balancer. So let's go to Elastic Load Balancing. And I just need one load balancer. For some services in the calculator, you're going to need to know some information about things like how many bytes are going to be processed, how many requests are going to hit your resource, that kind of thing. So uh, if it's a API gateway, for example, it's the number of requests coming in, it might be the size of requests with a load balancer, it's a similar sort of thing. So how many bytes are going to be processed uh, or how many bytes for Lambda? If you've got Lambda as a target, we're using EC2 in this particular example. So here, let's just put in one gigabyte per month. Okay. I'm keeping it low because I'm not going to, if I'm just doing an evaluation, I'm installing an Apache web server and I'm just sending requests to it, which is just a few HTML calls, then it's really not going to be much data at all. Okay. So one gigabyte per month. Uh, you can then play around for your corporate use case. You might, you know, it might be 10 gigabytes of data that's coming through per month. Uh, and then let's add this on. So per, let's say per minute, we've got a thousand connections coming in. What are the calculations? Okay, so application load balancer, LCU usage charges. That's the, they call that a load balancer capacity unit. Charges monthly, $3.89. Okay, so really not much. And you can play around with these. If, of course, if you start increasing these numbers, uh, the, the dollar amounts are going to go up quite significantly as well. Connection duration, you know, how many seconds here or how many milliseconds? Yeah, no, this is in seconds or minutes. So what's the average connection time? You can see that the numbers go up quite a lot when I increase that value fairly significantly. So let's put this back down to something reasonable. If I'm just doing a simple test, then I might have you know 10 or let's say we've got 100 connections coming through. If I'm automating some tests here, a gigabyte of data is probably all I'm going to do in total. Uh, and then connection duration is going to be literally, let's just say 60 seconds, something like that. So that brings the cost down to practically nothing. This is super, super cheap. I can save, add another service. Uh, auto scaling, I'm not sure if that's even here. It's probably EC2 auto scaling. Reason is, yeah, I can't see it there. Auto scaling is actually not a service you pay for. There may be some features where you do, which is why I was looking it up, but that's probably things like CloudWatch monitoring. That will be under CloudWatch rather than EC2 auto scaling. So for that particular workload, I can now view my summary and we can see we've got our two instances and our load balancer, uh, and it's telling me how much we're gonna spend per month. You can share this. It's going to create a URL that you can share with people. You can export this to a PDF or a CSV as well. And then at any time, you can go and add in, you can add support, for example, if you need that. If you're uh, putting together an estimation for a business use case, you can group. So, for example, if you have different applications and you want to find out what the cost is for those particular applications, um, but you want to add multiple of those into this estimate, then you can group them together. And you can always come back in and add services as well. So that's a very quick overview of using the AWS calculator. Now, I mentioned the other thing is to find out what the pricing models are and the costs per service. So you could search for AWS EC2 pricing. That'll take us to the pricing page. That's where you're going to find out the different pricing models that are available. EC2, there's quite a lot to it. So uh, if you are going to be running a lot of production workloads on EC2, you really need to understand this inside out. Same if you're studying for AWS exams, they want you to know this stuff. So we've got on-demand, savings plans, and spot instances, and lots of different instance types. So you'll find a similar pricing page for the different services. Uh, you can go into some detail here, for example, for on-demand it's going to tell you a lot more about the on-demand pricing. You can start searching for your different instance types here. Now, you can also do that in the EC2 console. So here I am logged into AWS. I can go into EC2. I can go down instance types. 
Uh, there's a little feature here, which is going to help you find instance types for different use cases. Uh, I haven't used it much. I'm not sure how useful that one is. Um, what I would tend to do is you can go to instance types and you can start searching by attribute or tag here. You can organize by the different column options here. And you'll see we've got CPUs, architecture, memory, storage, storage type, and so on, and then the pricing options. Uh, so for example, we could reorder this to see what the most expensive EC2 instances are. And we've got some of 896 vCPUs, and they're going to cost you, let's see, $270 an hour. So that's pretty expensive. Um, but of course, the, this varies right the way down to where we have one vCPU. There's lots of there's lots of very inexpensive instance types you can use when you're evaluating AWS. And again, remember to use the correct instance types for the credits if you want to use the credits under the free plan. I think it's going to limit you anyway. So that's the pricing calculator and the pricing pages. Again, for the pricing pages, just search for each individual service and you'll find the details. So just AWS. EC2 pricing or AWS Lambda pricing, et cetera. Set up a billing alarm in AWS budgets. So coming back into the console here, if I head up over to my account, and what I'm going to do is scroll down to where it says budgets. And on the budgets page here, I can create a budget. The one that you want to use is most likely this one, monthly cost budget. And then you can set a certain amount. So perhaps you could hundred bucks or ten dollars or whatever it is you think you're going to use. Now if you've gone into the calculator and you've worked out what your expected usage is based on what you're planning to do that particular month, then you'll be better informed to come here and enter the correct amount. All you have to do is set the amount and add in an email address and then it's going to notify you when one your actual spend reaches 85% of the budget or two, your actual spend reaches 100%, and three, if your forecasted spend is expected to reach 100% as well. So if you launched a really large instance type and it knows that within the month you're going to, uh, you're going to reach and, and hit that threshold, then it's also gonna send you a notification just to warn you that that's going to happen. So budget's very, very important. Another feature is cost anomaly detection, and this is enabled by default on new accounts. So cost anomaly detection uses machine learning, so it's looking for anything weird that it, that it notices that's out of the ordinary uh, in the way that you're using AWS and racking up a bill. So you can see some uh, entries here on, and the cost impacts, and you can review those and see if it's anything you need to be concerned about. So that's another useful feature that AWS provides. Another tip is to enable free tier alerts. Back in the AWS console, if you scroll all the way to the bottom here on the account page, you'll find uh, billing preferences. And under billing preferences, we have alert preferences. And here it's saying that it's automatically going to send a notification to the root user email address. But we want, might want to override that and specify a specific email for these notifications. So this is about free tier. If you're using up your free tier um, and, and you're about to hit a threshold on a particular service, it's going to actually send you an alert, which can be very useful. So all you have to do is enter the email address here, update that, and you're going to get those emails. Cost Explorer is a very, very useful tool. So once we're up and running and we're actually using AWS, we can go to Cost Explorer. Again, it's back in the account page here, Cost Explorer. And it's going to give us lots and lots of information on how we're spending money on AWS. And we can drill down into all sorts of different detail here. So you can see here, for example, this is an account I've been using for uh, educational purposes. Uh, I registered a domain back in February. So we've got a registrar cost there. We've got some tax. We've got Route 53. I'm using API Gateway, KMS, others. Uh, and so you can see on a monthly basis how you're using AWS, where the spend is going. Uh, and you've got lots of granularity, so you can change monthly through to daily or hourly. Uh, under filters on the right hand side here, we can choose particular services. So let's see, how much am I spending on EC2? Let's just apply that. Not much, but I did use it a little bit in July. Tiny cost, 18 cents. Okay, so 
pretty good because obviously I have the free tier with this particular account. This is in the old free tier model before uh, they actually removed it and changed it to the new credit based system. So Cost Explorer is a really useful tool, lots of ability to get really granular in here. Another tip is to use AWS organizations when you have multiple accounts. That's going to centralize your billing into one place. So you have one bill for multiple accounts um, and you're going to be able to then sort of go into Cost Explorer in one place and break down your costs. Uh, you've got one place where you're configuring your budgets and your alarms and that kind of thing. So that's useful if you have multiple accounts. It's not available in the new free plan, so you have to switch to a paid plan if you want to use AWS organizations. Uh, and make sure you do that. If you're on the free plan, make sure you actually switch to a paid plan before you try and use organizations, and that will preserve your credits so they're still available to you when you switch across to a paid plan. And last tip, remember to terminate, delete, or shut down resources. So perhaps that's one of the most important tips uh, if you need to preserve data, then in some cases you can do things like shutting down an EC2 instance. You may still get some EBS costs, so you've got to be aware how you're being charged for having EBS data uh, volumes on uh, in the EBS system, the Elastic Block Store. But if you shut down the instance, you're not actually paying for instance use time. So that can reduce your billing. And then you can start it back up again once you get back to, to working on that system. For other services, you may need to delete your data. For example, whether it's S3 or EFS, you might need to do that if, you, um, if you're going to pay. Again, understand the pricing models on those because S3, for example, extremely cost effective. So you might not need to worry too much. You don't want to delete data and make your life difficult unnecessarily if it's just going to save you a few cents here and there. So understand the models there, understand the pricing. Uh, and then determine if it's worth doing that or not. EC2 instances, of course, you can terminate them once you're finished with them, so don't forget to do that. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope that was useful, and if it was, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, and we're gonna be making many more videos like this one.